You're on your way to work one morning. Your bag over one shoulder, your coffee cup in your hand. As you approach the, your car, you see something on the sidewalk. Your, your eyes can't quite grasp what it is. Then your mind begins to recoil, recoil from what you see. And before you know it, you're dropping your coffee cup and you're emptying your breakfast on the ground. And as you backpedal retching, you realize what you see. One of your neighbors has been butchered on your sidewalk. Not just killed, butchered. Literally harvested for the flesh from their bones. You call the police, and no one ever shows up. You rush to your neighbors, and uh, none of them seem to care. They don't react. They kind of shrug like, you know, that's just the way of the world. You call the media, the newspapers, television station, bloggers, nothing. No one cares. Now, am I describing some Lovecraftian module for Call of Cthulhu or something like that? No. I'm describing the world as presented in the Kevin and Kel role-playing game. Now you're probably saying to me, how can that be? It's such a cheery looking cover. And it is a cheery looking cover. Um, enough with the mood lighting. The Kevin and Kel role-playing game is based on the Kevin and Kel webcomic. Um, I was vaguely aware of the comic when I uh, purchased this. Uh, I bought it used at a uh, local gaming store. I'd never heard of it. And when I encounter a role-playing game that I've never heard of, that piques my interest. Because I've heard of most of them. Um, and I'm, well, I'm vaguely familiar with it. Like, I knew it was an anthro comic out there that, you know, dealt with something. I didn't know what it was. And it deals with the domain which is an alternate Earth. Now, in this alternate Earth, uh, all animals, as stated in the game, are fully sapient, just like we are. Now, I'm not sure what all animals means. From the game, they talk a lot about uh, reptiles, uh, mammals, avians, I'm assuming amphibians. I think they mentioned into insects at one point, but I don't know if they mention if they mean sea life. And I don't know how far down does all mean when it comes to the animal kingdom. Are we talking krill? I'm not sure. If someone is a fan of the web comic, I'm not going to go read many of this. Uh, of the, uh, many of them, any of them actually after reading this game. Um, tell me how far down does it go? But just based on what I'm seeing here in this game. It's pretty much every animal that you can think of when you think of the word animal in your head is fully sapient. Not just sentient. My cats are sentient. But fully sapient like I am and I'm hoping you are too. Now, this presents an interesting problem because a portion of the animal kingdom are carnivores. And in this setting, the carnivores hunt and kill fellow citizens. To give you a perspective on that, that is a lot, a lot like saying some percentage of the population, and carnivores don't make up a huge percentage of the population in the world. Um, I actually don't know what percentage they make up. I would probably think it was in the 5% range or so. Um, just imagine if 5% of all the humans on this planet um, were serial killers that ate their victims. That's the world that is being presented in this and I'm finding it bizarre, disturbing, and quite frankly, revolting. Because everyone in this world just kind of shrugs their shoulders and accepts it. Which makes absolutely no sense. And when I say it's an alternate version of here, I mean it's an actual alternate version of, of here. Somehow, everything that we know in the real world here is paralleled in this, except it's being populated by sapient animals as opposed to sapient humans. Yes, I know humans are animals. Now, I read the background. I did not do a page per page reading for this rule, rule book. I freely admit this. I, like, for example, I didn't read the NPCs in the back a whole lot. I kind of skimmed through a couple of them. Um, 
but I read enough to understand how the mechanics work and I read enough to understand the setting. So I freely admit I did not read every, book, every word in this book, but I did not read enough to be dumbfounded at the oddity and strangeness in this game. And that's coming from me, a guy who has, owns and has read hundreds of role-playing games. In this, time travelers from our world find this one, go into the past, so that isn't really a time traveler then in my book, that's an interdimensional traveler, but what the heck. And they move 15,000 years into the past from today, so 15,000 years from right now. And they tinker with the evolution of humans. Well, I have a news flash. Humans were fully evolved 15,000 years ago. 15,000 years ago, we had been in Australia for 35,000 years. 15,000 years ago, we were in New England already. Okay, we had populated every corner of the planet by 15,000 years ago. 150,000 years ago, we were already here. If you go back 1.5 million years, you're dealing with our hominid ancestors that become us. So if you want to not have humans, you have to go all the way back to the point where we break off from a common ancestor with the chimps and the bonobos. And that's really far back, folks. And then I still think you have the possibility of there being some kind of human-like creature on this planet at the 15,000 year ago mark, but that's just speculation. So I'm not sure if the authors of this game and the person that designed the setting are unaware that 15,000 years ago humans were fully everywhere. I don't know if they get that because there are no humans in this game. So that right there makes it strange. And the fact that in a world without humans every single historical event that we have experienced is in this game. Christianity exists. The United States exists. All the countries that we know today not only exist but are called the same thing. And that makes no sense. Zero. Beyond the fact that the game presents a world where a, a significant portion of the population are serial killers and no one seems to care. Now in a realistic version of this, we'll, we'll gloss over the parallels that are bizarre with our world. But in a world where every single animal is sapient, The herbivores and the omnivores would just wipe out the carnivores. It's, it's our world. There's the same technology. TV, internet, guns. The herbivores outnumber the carnivores hundreds to one. You just kill them. It's that simple. Why would you tolerate that percentage of your population being serial killers? Now, this book was aimed squarely at the furry community. And I don't blame the furry community for the existence of this game. I blame the author for the existence of this game. But this product was aimed at the furry community. The characters in this are called furries. It's also seemed to be aimed at the subgenre of certain aspects of the furry community, People who are into vor, V-O-R-E. Now, from my understanding, people that are into soft vor have a fantasy about being consumed whole, while those that are into hard vor have a fantasy that about being consumed in pieces. This is a fetish product aimed at a very niche market. Or is that niche? I can never remember. And I had no problem with that. Let your freak flag fly in my book, folks. But why did we need this in a role-playing game? I don't get it. Now, the mechanics in this are pretty uh, usable. They're functional. Um, anyone who's familiar with uh, D&D stats will recognize the stats in this. They're called slightly different. They call health instead of constitution. They call it will instead of charisma. They're, they're six, six stats for a three mental, three physical. You get that. Um, stat ranges are roughly 1 to 10. Um, 
mechanics are three die six instead of a die 20, so it gives you a nice bell curve. And people, some people like bell curves, and I can respect that. Um, bell curves do make a lot of sense. You know, it gives you a nice average in the middle as opposed to the way a d20 works, which is a random 5% chance of anything. Um, and you, and if you want to succeed at something, you take your relevant stat. Say you're using a slingshot, you take your reflex, and you roll your three die six, and you add your reflex, and you're trying to hit a target number. Um, if you have a skill in slingshot, that gets added as well. So say if you had a four reflex and a four slingshot, you'd be adding eight to whatever you rolled on your three die six. Solid functional system. I've got no problem with it. Has the advantage of using. Uh, die sixes which are very common. I don't know if anything else in this uses a die, I don't remember, other than die sixes, but it would be easy to make sure that it didn't. And die sixes are you, you ubiquitous. You can buy them at the dollar store. You can buy a pack of ten of die sixes at the dollar store. Um, so I get no problem with the mechanics in the game. Uh, they also have a nice little chap chapter here on chases, like how when one group, one person is being physically chased by another, um, which is makes sense in a game that you have lots of carnivores and lots of herbivores being chased. Um, but my problem is with the setting itself. They talk about the fact that it says that your average herbivore would only have to tolerate four to five attacks in their lifetime. Think about that for a second. Would you tolerate five acts of attempted murder on you? No, you would not. You would rise up and you would make sure that the authorities did something, and if they didn't, you would rise up and you would take care of it yourself. You would grab a shield and you would grab a weapon, and you'd grab, if you had it, you'd grab a gun, and you'd go out and you'd solve the problem for yourself. You're not going to sit idly by where someone's going to try to kill you, or your wife, or your parents, or your children, or your friends, or your neighbors. Now, beyond all this, beyond the stupidity and the absurdity of this setting, the, the fact that it is a niche fetish product, all of that, why does it exist? This is based on webcomic. Okay, now I can imagine, I can see basing a game on Hellboy, which is a comic book. It's a world of adventure. Supernatural experiences. Okay? I completely understand that. I can see having DC and Marvel role-playing games. They're all based on comics. But this is a webcomic about ordinary people living their ordinary lives. It's like saying Peanuts, the role-playing game, or Dilbert, the role-playing game. For what purpose does this game exist? What other gaming system would not be able to do this in a heartbeat? And then there's the fact, there's the, there, there's the thing in here which is breeding. Two aspects which are strange. First, there is an actual agency in the game called the Species Registry whose job it is, is to check to ensure how much of a purebred member of your species you are, offer, and, and, and not offer, but issue a license if you meet the criteria, otherwise you can't call yourself a member of that species. That's freaking twisted! So on top of all this, you've got a layer of discrimination and bigotry. That's just warped! And the last thing about the species is that every single creature in this game can breed and have offspring with every other creature in this game. Which means they're all the same species. All of them. They're just people in fur suits or scaled suits or feathered suits. Because the definition of a species is a distinct genetic community that cannot breed with any other distinct genetic community. And if they can breed, like lions and tigers, and have sterile offspring, there's some usually a, a related cross-species reference. They came from common ancestors. Like mules. Came from common ancestors. That's why they exist. But if you can have functional, viable offspring that blend the traits. For example, there's a character in here that looks like a rabbit and has carnivorous diet. Then you're all the same species. Again, a failure to understand not only history, but biology. This is a weird game, folks. I don't understand why it exists. It's offensive in my, in my book to say that, that sapient beings would tolerate being hunted as prey and think nothing of this and accept it. That makes no sense. 
Why did they even try? Why don't they just lie themselves down the street and die? If you care so little for the, your life and the lives of the people you, that you love, that you would tolerate the existence of serial killers in the house next door. Not some skulking, you know, weird stranger in the dark. No, your neighbor, the guy that borrowed your weed whacker last week, could be out hunting and trying to eat you next week. This game makes no sense to me. Um, I would love to hear from people that are fans of the comic why people like this comic. What is it that attracts them? How this can be considered to make any sense whatsoever. Um, this is definitely going into my, my, my role-playing game collection, but it's going to be in the sub-genre of bad role-playing games. Not for the rules, but for the offensively grotesquely twisted world presented here. And it looks so pleasant. They don't tell me that I'm against furries. I'm not. I own numerous anthro role-playing games. Albedo, uh, Justifiers, Jade Claw, Iron Claw, One Tree, or the World Tree, rather. And I like them all. I love anthro characters. They're some of my favorite characters in role-playing games. I love the concept. I have given generous reviews about products that include them, including Noble Wild, which is ordinary animals, well, sapient versions of ordinary animals. I think they're awesome, and I have nothing against the furry community whatsoever. I have defended them many times. I love furry art. Anthro art is great, but this is just twisted, and I don't understand why it exists. Uh, if someone could explain it to me, I would really and truly be, uh, be grateful.